Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Online Ocean Symposium's very first Google Plus Hangout. The symposium was founded to bring together voices from the ocean community to discuss current news, projects, and solutions in the ocean world. We will be having regular video forums like this one with guests that include educators, policymakers, ocean explorers, advocates, artists, and people from all walks of life to speak on related topics. Uh, we welcome you to join these conversations, and you can find out more by checking out our website, which uh, you can see right about here, uh, which is called the Online Ocean Symposium. Um, I'm Andrew Kornblatt. Uh, in a bit, we will be joined by um, a colleague of mine, Amber Jackson. Uh, we can go a little bit more into uh, the symposium and Google Hangouts. But in this Hangout, my guests and I, which you can see below, are going to be discussing highlights of 2012 as it pertains to the ocean and what we are looking forward to in 2013. So uh, let's kick it off with uh, Samantha Harris. Sam, uh, you are from the Terramar Project. I am I'm the director of the Terramar Project. We have created a really exciting new initiative to create a, the world's largest global ocean community. We're trying to educate the largest group of citizens we can through social engagement and education, and we're really excited to be here. And congratulations on your first Google Hangout. Thanks, thanks. That's awesome. I'm taking a look at your site right here, and I see that uh, people can actually become a citizen. What does that mean? Sure. So to become a citizen of the Terramar Project basically means that you are claiming your stake in an area of the ocean that already belongs to you. So we're all familiar with coastal issues as they relate to the ocean, but not so much international waters. So what we've done is we've created a tangible identity for the high seas. The high seas are those waters that exist outside of every country's jurisdiction, and they're common areas to all of us, which technically means they belong to all of us already. So what we've done is we've created an organization so that you can sign up for your free citizenship. Your citizenship then makes you a citizen of the high seas, and you can utilize our website to educate yourself, your friends, and your family about species that live in the high seas and different organizations that are trying to help better the future of the high seas. That's fantastic. Um, Molly, would you like to introduce yourself in uh, One World, One Ocean? Sure. My name is Molly Malloy, and I'm the Marketing and Communication Manager for One World, One Ocean and McGill Ray Freeman Films. And One World, One Ocean is our special project here at McGill Ray Freeman Films. Uh, we're the largest independent producer of IMAX films, and this project comes from the company's and family's personal passion to use our uh, unique skills as storytellers to help raise awareness of the ocean. So we're doing that through um, multi-platform media, including online videos, social media, and of course our IMAX films. And uh, we've been around for a year and we've seen some great success and looking forward to talking about our plans for this year. That's fantastic. Um, I noticed on your website there's something called uh... Uh, I forget what it's called specifically, but you're doing live uh, broadcast now? Yeah, uh, we have a new uh, online effort called McGillivray Freeman Live. Um, in fact, in the past, in our first 30 days, we've already garnered 1 million views, so we're really excited. We have another episode tomorrow at um, 11 a.m. Pacific time, and we're really using the platform, our McGillivray Freeman platform on Ustream, to do some live programming all about behind the scenes filmmaking. Um, talking through the cameras we use, anecdotes from our film expeditions. Our crew right now is uh, shooting principal photography for our upcoming film, On the Oceans, which is coming out in 2014. So we'll be talking about that. So we hope that everyone will tune in and share it with their communities because um, it's, it's a fun program. Thanks. Fantastic. Um, I wanted to uh, be, uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, our good friend Rachel from Upwell just came in and we uh, wanted to shoot it to you if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Upwell. Oh, sorry, your sound doesn't seem to be working. Um, hmm. Well, while she's figuring that out, let's actually shoot it over to Asher. Hi, um, thank you for having me here and uh, at your first Google Hangout. I actually started out um, with um, AsherJ.com, which initially was just graphic designs that I developed for various ocean um, concerns. And I initially started sketching out for BP oil spill, which eventually led to me creating installation art. So I launched um, Sea Speaks Fear Message in a Bottle, which was a dis visual display or a visual petition 
for various voices that are speaking out for the oceans, which came out last year on World Oceans Day. And then I also came out with Garbeja, which is um, a country, once again, taking ownership of the world, but through parody, um, to kind of cast a light on how post-consumer waste is proliferating in marine and terrestrial ecosystems. So once again, if you go to garbeja.com, similar to Terramar in that light, where you can, you know, anybody can apply for citizenship, and but all of it has an element of um, exaggerated humor and indifference through which people can understand the extent to which we are affecting the planet. Um, apart from which, my most recent venture is that I've launched, um, co-founded this thing called Blue Beyond Borders, which holds events every month, and we have one coming up on Jan 30th um, for the Marine Environmental Research Institute, Dr. Susan Shaw's organization, and the previous one was held for the New York Aquarium. So, oh. Well, how can people at home actually participate in that? In Blue Beyond Borders? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's held in New York, and uh, essentially I would love for everyone to be able to attend in person because it's going to integrate both art and science to raise awareness for various ecological concerns orbiting the oceans. Um, and each one's t kind of tailor-made to benefit the organization for which the entire fundraiser is being held for. So this one, since this is for Mary, we're going to have um, performances, everything that orbit marine pollution, essentially, and help her kind of further the dialogue through other conduits. Um, and so um, people who can't make it to the event, we're planning on videotaping it this time. The previous event, we couldn't actually get a videographer in. But this one should be taped, so we pro probably will have it online um, for people to watch afterwards. Awesome. Um, well, with that, let me introduce uh, Rachel. Uh, Rachel, can you speak? I hope so. Can you awesome. hear me? Awesome. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Um, I'm speaking from the offices of Upwell in San Francisco. And mm -hmm. Upwell is a pilot project. We are a big experiment um, that lasts about a year. Um, and our frame is that we're structured as a social media PR agency, and the ocean is our client. Um, so rather than being focused on um, the brands of individual organizations or even, um, to a large extent, individual issues within marine conservation, um, we try to have a um, brand agnostic, um, ocean issue agnostic frame and look for the biggest opportunities we can online to gain more attention for the ocean. So we've been doing experiments um, for the past year um, and have developed some campaigning techniques and some really big social data scraping um, techniques that we look, to f look at to find opportunities in conversation. We call that big listening. Awesome. So what does it actually mean to be a PR team for the ocean? What, what does that entail? Uh, we have a lot of client meetings at the beach, basically. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually... Um, uh, while being amusing, it's actually pretty difficult to discern because we um, we balance out um, our funders to some extent, our our clients. Um, so you can think of it that way. And um, the frame that I most often use for the team is where can we have the biggest impact um, in terms of bringing ocean conservation issues forward. Um, so it's it's been a privilege to get to have that kind of big lens um, on an issue like this. Awesome. Um, with that, with the big impact conversation with ocean conser uh, conservation, I want to introduce our special guest, uh, Wallace J. Nichols. Would you like to say hi? Hey, how you doing, everybody? Um, J. Nichols, I'm a marine biologist. Uh, I've studied sea turtles for a long time, and then turtles have connected to plastic pollution and bycatch and community organizing uh, and general messaging about the state of the ocean. Um, and more recently, through Blue Mind, we've been uh, investigating the, sort of the neuroscience behind our emotional connection to water, uh, which has been utterly fascinating, one of the most interesting projects I've ever been involved in. And um, lots to say about that, but uh, just a nice brief intro. No, that's fantastic. I, that's really an amazing connection. Uh, well, we are all connected with the ocean. Um, one thing in particular, we have a mutual friend, Deb, from uh, Mission Blue, and she gave me this. Can you tell me what the significance is of this? Well, I have one, too. Wait, there you go. Wait, where's the... <laughs> Here, that's not marble. <laughs> um, well, you know, we all attend all kinds of ocean conferences and meetings and talk to each other about what's going on with the ocean, and, and it felt like a lot of times after those events, People just went right back to whatever they were doing, and, and it, it wasn't as sticky as 
we'd hoped it would be. And um, we just came up with this idea of sharing blue marbles with people at those events and asking them to pass on those blue marbles as um, uh, a symbol of gratitude uh, to those doing good work for our planet. And the first time we did it, it went really well. The feedback was great, so we kept doing it. And next thing you knew, there's a million marbles being shared around the world um, in a very decentralized, unorganized, viral kind of way. And um, marbles have found their way to Antarctica. They found their way to the bottom of the ocean with James Cameron. They found their way into the hands of Jane Goodall. Uh, and they're just simple reminders that we live on a little blue planet and that we need to say thank you to each other uh, a lot more often uh, for all the hard work that we're all doing, um, little things and big things alike. So it's been a really interesting, I don't know what you call it, movement, campaign, project, um, game, maybe it's a game. Well, I can tell you from personal experience that I was ridiculously touched when I got uh, one of those little guys, and I saw them all over the Blue Ocean Film Festival, and uh, everybody just loves them. Uh, I know that you have to kind of uh, skedaddle uh, relatively shortly, and your time is limited, uh, but let's go into our next section, which is uh, what did you see about, uh, what was your favorite part of 2012 as it pertained to the ocean? What were your favorite stories? I, you know, I think I'd, I'd refer to the, the work of bringing neuroscientists together with, with ocean people as really a, um, really mind-blowing. By, by the way, there's Julia. Hi. Hi. Julius, my helpers. Um, just get, getting that conversation going uh, at a higher level and, and really getting into um, a new kind of ocean science, which is... You know, neuroscience, cognitive science, and understanding better what the real drivers of the problems and the solutions are in the human brain. Because everybody says conservation is behavior change, but if we don't understand behavior fundamentally, how will we expect to change it? Uh, and the people who understand behavior more and more in the past decades are, are the neuroscientists. And... Um, why not bring them to the table and to join the conversation? So I'd say a highlight of 2012 has been just seeing seeing that basic idea spread through media, through conversations, uh, through conferences, and then you know I think 2013 we will begin to figure out how to put it into into practice. Well, that's a big hope. I mean, uh, that's part of why we're here talking. Um, I wanted to give a chance to introduce Amber. Uh, hey, Amber. Uh, welcome to the Hangout. Uh, it looks like you're uh, possibly still muted, so you might want to oh, check. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I am in Starbucks right now, so my internet is really bad. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to say that as a partner in the symposium, I am looking to bridge the gap between science and public awareness. And I believe that today we lead a transformation um, in that way, with the ocean, in the way the ocean community, communi the ocean community communicates, <laughs> and um, Andrew and I work together with Google Ocean and the Blue Ocean Film Festival to launch Underwater Street View, and we hosted a very successful and engaging um, Google Plus Hangout there, and I think that. That was the time where we really saw the potential that this tool has. Uh, and I'm so happy to be here and be a part of it and be with you all. So thank you for being here. Well, we're really happy to have you. I personally am very happy to have you on the team. And all those experiences in the, in the festival just really showed uh, the need for constant communication and interaction between the ocean community and uh, the lay people out there, people who might not know about all the awesome stuff that people are doing uh, for the ocean and for, uh, for each other. I know that the internet is kind of uh, shaky there, so if we lose you, I, uh, we lose you. Yeah. Uh, let's continue the conversation uh, and throw it over to Molly. Uh, Molly, what were your favorite stories of 2012? I think for us, and it's just so relevant because of what's occurred in the past couple of days, is really um, our mission to Aquarius Reef Base with Sylvia Earle and the team of Aquanauts there. 
to really showcase what could have been its last mission. Um, when we were there, not only um, was it just incredible for us to just be a part of it, but we used all these tools that we're talking about from social media to our camera crews to really bring that story to the world with uh, partners like Mission Blue, um, National Geographic. We did a Google Plus Hangout as well with Sylvia from you know 50 feet underwater, all designed to showcase this incredible uh, symbol of ocean exploration with the hopes that it could be saved as its funding was being cut off. Um, and just to be a part of it and see all the incredible um, media that came out of it from articles in the Washington Post to this to the Associated Press to even a little blip on The Daily Show was just really inspiring and in getting that story that might not have ever been told to the public. And I say this because two days ago we found out that it's official that Aquarius is being taken over by Florida Inter International University. So it just goes to show that when a group of people work together and use media in the right ways that we really can make a tangible impact. And um, we're just really excited about the future of Aquarius. So that for us was really, you know, just a, a highlight of 2012 and 2013 to kick off the year. Yeah, most definitely. It was fantastic to hear about uh, Mission Aquarius being basically saved uh, from the brink. Uh, that, that also means that we all have the possibility of maybe visiting there someday, um, which would be yeah, fantastic. Um, Asher, would you like to take it next? What were some of your favorite stories? Sure. Um, I think, you know, when I first launched Message in a Bottle, it, I didn't really re understand the potential it had, but it's participatory experience um, where I can facilitate uh, dialogues with various youth um, in schools and universities has been the most uh, beneficial aspect of it, where I've been able to go to different educational institutions and speak with kids about how they could, you know, add to the message in a bottle installation, which is not just to create a, a, an artistic um, moment of expression, but also to truly comprehend what it stands for, which is essentially to create a time capsule for 2012, 2013 going forward. And every person who lends their voice to it is essentially putting their message for that period of time about either an ocean concern or a solution into that bottle, and it's being exhibited with several other voices. So it's about how many different uh, people can speak up at simultaneous address for as many issues as possible. Um, and so that's been an interesting you know, undertaking for me because I've been traveling around with the exhibit and also conducting workshops and working with various institutions to raise awareness through that campaign, also for plastic pollution and plastic consumption because it's kind of, you know, uses plastic bottles to um, express different ocean uh, ecosystems or um, wildlife. And um, apart from that, I think Blue Beyond Borders has tremendous potential because I, I initially just kick-started it with a couple of friends in the ocean community, Anne Duble, um, you know, Richard Ellis, and uh, David Guggenheim and others got on board for the previous event for the New York Aquarium. And going forward, I, I feel like there are a lot of other institutions who want to use this as a way to kind of seed sea change, uh, which is the premise of it, to co combine art and science to seed sea change. Um, and so going forward, I have an event every month coming up and you know it's going to be for a different institution each time so we're going to use this to raise awareness also funding and kind of facilitate an interesting dialogue where it can reach people and it's not just about preaching to the choir so um, that's what 2012 and 2013 looks like for me. That's fantastic uh, you know we all are looking forward to uh, bringing together art science and various ways of uh, pushing uh, and bridging the science and uh, personal uh, community gap. Uh, one of the things that uh, we definitely need to work on in the ocean community and just the conservation community in general is to continue reaching out to the youth and uh, inspiring people to continue these uh, activities. Um, Sam, what about uh, yourself? What were some of uh, the big stories from Terramar? I think the biggest story from Terramar is that we launched at the Blue Ocean Film Festival in 2012. So that was really exciting. That's where I met you. That's where I met Amber. And I think this was, and actually everybody from Upwell. So that was the beginning of a really great relationship with lots of other young people in the ocean community who are trying to bridge the gap, as Amber said, between organizations and NGOs and really socially engaging the largest group of people to deliver a message of awareness, hope, change and ultimately educating the largest group of people about the problems that are in the ocean. And that's really what our goal is at Terramar, is to create a huge ocean community. And we're doing that through social engagement and providing lots of exciting educational materials out on our website. 
Um, if you do get an opportunity to go to our website and check out the education page, you'll see we've partnered with um, the Encyclopedia of Life through the Smithsonian. We've got lots of great podcasts through them, introducing you to different species in the high seas, as well as interesting and intriguing maps through National Geographic and the EOL. So not only are we trying to educate and engage, but we want to provide people materials that they can then share with their kids, friends, and family or students. And also the Daily Catch, sorry. I just got reminded that we have the Daily Catch, which is really great. Um, and that's where we aggregate all the most current, most interesting pressing news in the water as it relates to the ocean, rivers, streams, lakes, you name it. And the thing we're looking forward to most in 2013 is trying to get as many citizens engaged and signed up to the Terramar project as possible. That's great. Um, I uh, personally am a citizen of Terramar and have a little plot of land that I actually uh, uh, took over. Um, and I'm very proud to be a member. And uh, I'm really happy with all the great work Terramar is doing and continue to do. Uh, I did get notice that, Jay, you actually have to uh, head off. So I wanted to give you a chance to sign off. And, you know, uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure to have you on our first Hangout. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Great to see everybody. Um, virtually and to hear all these great updates and uh, one thing that's so important and so obvious from this group is is collaboration I think you can't you can't have a project without being extremely collaborative especially when you work for the ocean there's just there's no way we're gonna solve any of these problems without kind of unprecedented collaboration uh, on a global scale and um, it's great that I think this generation understands collaboration really well and understands how to share and understands how to work together and that's that's uh, up, makes me optimistic about about the years ahead so um, amen Jay. amen yeah. right on see you guys sorry I have to run bye. bye again thank you for coming it was a pleasure having you it was a big surprise and a big pleasure just to hear that you were uh, possibly coming and again thank you for these these guys are fantastic but see I'm a little jealous I don't have one <laughs> you're 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 gonna get there one go. I'm, I'm just assuming that's gonna thank you, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Take that one. <laughs> so with that let's uh, turn it over to Rachel Rachel uh, you guys up well pay attention to the net pay attention to all these top stories uh, what were some of your favorites or one of your favorites um, the one that strikes me as the biggest opportunity um, that I'm so excited to see what the whole community can do with this year is Discovery Channel Shark Week. Um, mm -hmm. Of all of the social mention volumes that we watch um, over years and then we pulled multiple years of data, um, it is the biggest spike among, um, we watch uh, the big ocean conversation and then kind of uh, seven subtopics in there, uh, cetaceans are whales and dolphins. Um, sharks, tuna, um, uh, ocean acidification, marine protected areas, sustainable seafood, and overfishing. And um, the, the highest volume of those subtopics usually is cetaceans on a kind of day-to-day -day basis. It has a higher baseline of interest. Mm -hmm. um, but the shark conversation is the kind of number two guy there. And it spikes bigger than any other spike in any other category during shark week. And it, sharks, it spikes multiple days. Um, so there are a huge amount of shark fans out there um, who not necessarily talking um, about conservation messages, um, but there are shark fans who love them and speak rapidly about them online, especially in this one concentrated period um, during Shark Week, and it's just such a killer opportunity, um, I think, to expand the conversation beyond um, the people who are usually involved and to attach conservation issues um, to a amazing, beautiful creature that people are wildly passionate about. So um, I feel like that's an unmissable thing to pay attention to. If you're campaigning in this space and you can get involved somehow, figure it out. Yeah. Um, I mean, not only sharks in general, but right now, in the past couple of weeks, shark finning uh, has been huge all throughout the ocean community. I know that uh, Sharon Pong and Mission Blue has been doing a lot of work on that, and I know that our very own uh, guest here today, Sam, actually has an article up uh, in the Huffington Post about shark finning. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that, Sam? 
Sure, um, I do. I made a trip down to Chinatown to see how many people were selling shark fins and what was really going on in my community. Um, I found that you know, the more I read about shark finning and the excitement, as Rachel said, behind Shark Week, I, I wondered sort of where was the disconnect and what was really happening? Because while people aren't necessarily killing sharks for their fins here, you know, off the coastal waters of the United States or the East Coast, for some reason, there seems to be an abundance of shark fins available for sale. So mm -hmm. what I did was I went down to Chinatown. I walked around to every single store I could find, looked to see what they were selling on the shelves, asked the proprietors questions about the shark fins and other dried sea creatures they were selling, um, as well as looking at restaurant menus to see who was selling shark fin soup. I think the most ironic thing I found was an all vegetarian restaurant selling a mock shark fin soup, which I thought was interesting because apparently it's so embedded in the culture that they felt they needed to even have a vegetarian version of it. So I shared my experience and my story and gave some interesting facts and the article that I published on my Huffington Post blog has gotten great feedback, lots of shares, and it's really opening up a larger conversation, which is what my goal was. You know, I think we need to talk more about it. Most definitely. Um, you know, sharks, shark finning, conservation, all these stories uh, were some of the top ones in 2012. But if we look at, uh, there's tons of different blogs out there that listed their top stories of 2012. Uh, one of my particular favorites was from the Ocean Conservancy's uh, um, blog Aquatic, which goes from everything to plastic straws to, uh, again, sharks. Um, and tops off with uh, the TED Ed educational uh, conversation about sea turtles and uh, it's just a fantastic collection of all these articles but one in particular uh, collection that I really liked was from One World One Ocean's blog and that one topped off with the Arctic. Uh, Molly can you tell us a little bit about uh, those collections and uh, you know of those stories why was the Arctic the top story? Yeah of course I mean for us um I'm not sure how many people are familiar with our newest IMAX film, To the Arctic, but we worked on this film for a number of years. And as you can imagine, taking IMAX cameras up into the Arctic is pretty difficult. And it was a film we really wanted to make because of the changes occurring there. Um, you know, sea ice is uh, diminishing more rapidly than ever before. And so to be able to show people how that's happening and really bring it to life through the eyes of polar bears um, was what we set out to do. And we we just got so lucky in that we uh, were able to follow a polar bear family for five days, which has never been done before, and really tell their story and the challenges that they're facing because of rising temperatures. Um, and the film came out last April. Um, it was narrated by Meryl Streep, uh, music by Paul McCartney. We had so many great uh, partners on, on board, conservation partners. And um, if you've seen the film, I think it really does tell the story Arctic so well, and we're, we're very excited about it first. So for us, you know, the Arctic really was, uh, uh, you know, the key focus for us in 2012, and, and it continues to be moving forward. And we just hope that um, in working with our partners um, that the film help inspire some action to uh, protect this really important place. Most definitely. Um, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Karima who just joined us uh, in this hangout. Hey, how's it going? Uh, do make sure that your uh, mic is on so that we can chat with you. But basically, you come from the pa Plastic Pollution Coalition. Can you tell us a little bit about that and yourself? Oh, it's still off. Um, while you figure that out, I'm going to pop it back over here. Uh, Rachel, do you have a couple of uh, other top stories you'd like to talk about? What are you looking forward to in 2013? Um, experimenting with ways to um, talk about breaking news um, in fun ways that are just really socially shareable um, has been a lot of our, our effort to date. Um, and we think that we've refined some tactics and um, now we know to loop into the conversations as quickly as we can when research reports or scientific findings are coming out um, in advance um, is best. So if, if anybody is breaking any hot news, um, if you have a chance to talk to us in advance, um, we have some, some quick tips and tricks um, to make sure that that is, uh, news is just keyed up really well to spread online. Um, and 
Uh, so we're going to be focusing on doing more of that kind of work. Awesome. Uh, I just got word that uh, Amber is going to have to uh, head out and also uh, Samantha. If you guys could uh, just uh, thank you so much for coming, but uh, if you guys have a couple final words, let's uh, throw it to you. Ooh. Or not. So. Oh, here we go. Now, I'm sorry, my mic was off. I just wanted to say I'm really excited about uh, this new group, and I'm privileged and honored to be included in your first hangout, and I can't wait for the next. And just keep checking out the Terramar Project, check in with the Daily Catch, follow us on every single piece of social media you can think of. We're on it. Um, and I look forward to you all becoming citizens, and if you're not, please sign up. Most definitely. Amber, what about you? All right. Yeah, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. So good to see everybody here again. And I'm really looking forward to um, seeing where this goes. I think it's got a lot of potential. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, Molly, did you want to give a quick shout out before you head ahead? Yeah, I did. I'm sorry that I have to head out. I would say that. Um, we're really embarking on an exciting couple of weeks here at One Rolling Ocean in McGillivray Freeman. Um, we're, our whole crew is out in Indonesia filming for our next film coming out in 2014. That's all about the South Pacific and the marine life there. Um, Brian Lamb, who many of you may know, um, who writes for Gizmodo and other really great outlets will be joining us. And there's going to be some great coverage, real-time coverage coming out of the trip as part of a um, and the Gilvray Freeman Explores Fellowship that we're launching with Brian being our first fellow where we're inviting artists to join us on expeditions to help share the stories that we're filming there with the world and with their community. So we hope that you'll check it out on One Roll in Ocean and the McGillivray Freeman social platforms as well. And um, there'll be some really cool cool photos, cool videos. And uh, we look, I look forward to doing this again with everyone. This has been great. Well, thank you so much for uh, being part of our initial one. Looking uh, forward to what comes out of One World, One Ocean, and looking forward to uh, not just this next year, but 2014 for that awesome, awesome uh, movie that's coming out. Yeah, it seems right around the corner. Yeah, right? <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, well, thank you for joining again. Um, while you're heading out, let's check back in with Karima. How's that mic going? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear Yay. you now. Okay, great. <laughs> Um, well, uh, I'm with the Plastic Pollution Coalition, and I uh, am in charge of a new program that we're starting this year, and it is going to uh, involve uh, plastic-free events, and we're looking to green a lot of large events. Uh, we're, we're looking to uh, participate in um, the London Marathon uh, this year, and also um, the... Uh, we would like to make the Olympics in Rio in uh, 2016 a plastic-free event. So those are some of the, the large projects that we have on the roster. Um, last year, um, Plastic Pollution Coalition uh, received an EPA grant which allowed us to expand um, the plastic pollution um, campuses and that feels like a very important thing because um, young people just it feels like there's definitely a movement that needs to happen in that direction and it seems that um, like we have I think about 1500 campuses and that just is wow. growing by the week um, so that's really exciting that's fantastic is the is that part of the uh, refuse uh, pledge the uh, yeah. project you're working on yeah, the Refuse Pledge is something that kind of stands alone, and uh, we open that to plastic-free towns and just um, everybody who uh, would like to, to reduce the amount of plastic in their day-to-day -day, um, life. So that feels like a really big one. But another project that uh, I'd like to highlight that the Plastic Pollution Coalition is doing is um, Think Beyond Plastic. And I, I believe that uh, Pam Marcus... Um, who is is leading our outreach on that talked about it during the last uh, gathering mm -hmm. um, but that feels like it's really um, an exact you know in terms of, of having um, a being action oriented and finding solutions to the plastic pollution problem that that uh, really feels um, important and so we have uh, 20 people that have signed up for it um, the competition the prize is fifty thousand dollars and um, that will be happening in March um, where uh, they're, they're going to be uh, there's going to be an event at the David Brower Center in Berkeley 
How do how do I get in on the action? Absolutely. Go to thinkbeyondplastic.com and anybody can put in a proposal. So it definitely it's open to everybody that has great ideas on how to reduce uh, plastic pollution. That's fantastic. Uh, one of the things that we've been asking everybody in the panel is what were our favorite uh, ocean-related stories of 2012 and what are we looking forward to in uh, 2013. Pretty much everybody else has had a chance to chat about that. Any highlights from you? Oh my goodness, there's so much. Um, I, I really think that this um, symposium is, is a wonderful, wonderful development and um, I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, in terms of uh, 2012, um, gosh, there's just so many things. I um, I really love what the NRDC has been doing in terms of making sure that there is <clears throat> a lot of corporate responsibility in terms of uh, what Coca-Cola is doing and, and uh, different corporations and it just it feels like they are um, the land sharks of um, keeping all of these corporations at bay and um, I, I really in terms of a sister organization I really love what they're doing and um, uh, the amazing achievements this year of Sylvia Earle um, and, and uh, Mission Blue. Um, I, I just give them the utmost kudos for, for the amazing work that they do. Uh, personally, there are tons of uh, different stories this last year. Uh, everything from you know the Blue Ocean Film Festival, which we mentioned here, and that gathering, the Ocean Health Index coming out was fantastic and a game changer. The acidification conference and many other interesting stories. Uh, mm -hmm. Personally, I really loved how much attention uh, marine protected areas have gotten this year. Mm -hmm. uh, from the Wild Aid Conference, the fact that you know the California underwater parks just got kicked into gear. Uh, not to toot my own horn, but I actually wrote about it in my uh, personal blog. Uh, Rachel, uh, what do you, you know? Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the underwater parks? Didn't you guys uh, release a big story on that relatively recently? Yeah, we were really excited about um, the anniversary um, of. Uh, the um, parks in the U.S. Um, and we, it's it's one of marine protected areas is one of the smallest conversations that we cover, um, in part or, or that we pay attention to in part because the uh, it's a like really difficult um, conversation to track because in social media people speak quickly and in short ways, um, so we use the MPA lingo within um, the community. And that's one of the giant limitations of keyword-based searches is mm -hmm. uh, there's also Masters of Public Administration and a few other MPA things that get flipped around uh, pretty quickly. So it's a small volume conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and we think there's a, a big opportunity there, um, especially potentially around um, helping Americans to understand um, the excitement and opportunities around these um, protected areas that we are adding um, awesomely to the portfolio of protected ocean bits. Um, so these are um, the kinds of efforts that are going to need un public understanding and mm -hmm. stewarding over the long term as um, budgets are threatened, especially since they all need um, enforcement. You got to protect it and then you have to enforce it. So um, just like the California port park system, um, when budget uh, state budgets are challenged, um, if there isn't an understanding populace, there's some, some danger there um, in making sure that the funds stay intact to actually enforce the protections. Most definitely. Uh, in regards to your concern about spreading the uh, the word, spreading the message of the marine protected areas, I know that various celebrities have gotten in on the game, like Leonardo DiCaprio came out very big for uh, marine protected areas and some other uh, big celebrity names. Um, there's also a lot of uh, different visuals that are going in, various media, movies, uh, music. I'm actually wondering, uh, Asher, can you speak a little bit about how art can be used to, uh, and media in general can be used to spread the word of conservation, just like as a end cap to this awesome conversation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, when you try, everything that I do, I'm kind of trying to bring conceptual elements together, so it's not just about a single narrative being expressed, but as many of the issues coming together, so people kind of understand a holistic and larger picture 
than you know focusing in on just one at a time because people don't understand that all these issues are interdependent and interlinked and how one influences the other and how one solution can also tie into others so um, I have a couple of uh, installations that I'm coming forward with in the upcoming year one of which is going to focus on uh, bioacoustics and uh, marine pollution through noise you know the footprint of anthropogenic noise in the oceans uh, and I'm working with uh, Chris Clark on that and so you know, and then I have a couple of other projects with Roger Payne where we're trying to use, um, you know, creative media to raise awareness. He really appreciates the fact that, like, my graphic design campaigns have been quite effective because a lot of NGOs have actually commissioned me to create pieces which, in a glimpse, convey what uh, the issue that they want me to bring out. So it's like, you know, the previous um, campaign that I did was actually for shark finning for positive change for marine life where they wanted me to showcase, um, you know, a thresher shark, basically, and how it's being thinned in excess um, for shark fin soup. And so I, I try to reduce the noise, the visual clutter, and to really present it to the lay person in an effective way such that they can you know, understand it even if they have no prior knowledge about it. Mm. Um, and so I think like, visual narratives are very powerful because a single image, or even if it's a film or a visual media of any sort, has an emotional connection to people. Like It's a way of reaching out where even if I did not know the academics behind it, I would still comprehend and take away something with me. So it's a way in which I can basically channel uh, um, different people's ideas and thoughts and findings, recent findings, in a cohesive manner such that a person who has no prior knowledge about it can comprehend it. So I think, you know, which is why I'm so grateful. Like, at, at present, I feel like there's a huge market for such overlap between people who are doing essentially PR, but, like, I could channel that through a visual medium as well. So it's sort of like advertising for the oceans. And mm -hmm. that's very essential because we need to garner larger support. And our group is consistently growing because every year, you know, I hear more voices getting on board, more people doing interesting things mm -hmm. pertaining to marine conservation in ways in which it hasn't been explored before. Even with the Terra Mar project, which I think is great, and the Blue Ocean Film Festival has grown, you know, tremendously in the past two years even. Um, and the people who are attending it, the number of celebrities who are getting on board, all of which have grown exponentially. So I think, you know, media has tremendous potential in get gaining that kind of traction. Awesome. No, I definitely hear you in regards to the, all the cross-collaboration, all the interesting projects. Um, part of the reason that the symposium was really formed was so that the different working parts can try to communicate better together and push all that out to uh, the public in one easily digestible, uh, digestible thing. Um, hopefully, we can uh, work together and all do well by the ocean, all do well to spread the word about why we need to protect our uh, all the different parts of our big blue marble that we all live on. Um, with that, I wanted to give you guys a chance to give a couple of closing remarks since we are pretty much at the end of our hangout. Um, personally, thank you all for joining. It was a pleasure to have you in our first initial hangout for the Online Ocean Symposium. Um, and I wanted to kick it to uh, Karima. Uh, you joined us a little bit late, uh, understandable. Uh, hopefully you can come back for some more in the future. Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, you know, final words. Well, um, I wanted to say that some of the things that are interesting to me, um, aside from the work that I do with the Plastic Pollution Coalition, and I really would love to uh, invite uh, collaboration with me personally if any of you are interested in exploring this. Um, one of the things that I find really intriguing is to work on an emergency um, a response team for um, marine debris or trash when a national disaster happens. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there needs to be a uh, emergency response. So for instance, what happened in Japan, if, if there was some sort of a, um, a protocol in terms of dealing with the, the logs and all the trash that was coming, um, the country that is uh, going through um, the earthquake needs to pay attention to their people, what's happening inside of their um, country. And I really feel that to diminish the amount, uh, because of, of um, global warming, I just think that we're going to have more and more disasters. And it feels like keeping a cap, it's so much less expensive to collect that debris um, early on um, at the mouth of the source instead of waiting until it shows up in Midway Island. So I would love to invite anybody who wants to collaborate on uh, working on a project like that. 
That's a that's a fantastic idea. That's a fantastic project. Uh, definitely keep us informed and let us know uh, how that uh, moves forward, and we would definitely love to help you out on that. Um, Astrid, do you have any final uh, words? Um, yeah, I'm just like a little out of it because I've be, I just got in from uh, overseas actually, and so I'm still a little jet lagged. But um, I I think you know the reason why people I mean I think people from different walks of life are essential, and I think people who are doing specific issue concern like issues or concerns like uh, Mission Blue when they focus on a specific topic and they pull it through all the way. Um, whether it's the reef aquarius space or whatever it is that they take on. You also need people who are looking at the broad scope picture. So I don't think when people ask me what can I do, how can I get involved, it need not be one or the other. Like just find it like from where you are is what you can start with, you know. So you can't make all overnight changes that are really dramatic. But for the average person who wants to get involved in this dialogue and they keep asking me about this. Um, you can do a number of things. You know, you can reduce everyday plastic in your life. You can start with small things like, you know, look at your daily habits. How much do you take in? How many plastic bags do you take home? Yeah, whether you switch from, you know, drinking from plastic bottles or if you have a refillable bottle that you take with you everywhere you go. Um, things that are, you can find, you know, alternatives available online now, you know, at the beck and call. You can go to so many websites to find sustainable materials through which you can package things. Um, you know, ship things. So, for instance, as an artist, when I ship canvases, I always wonder how I'm going to bubble wrap it. And so, bubble wrap, you actually find many alternatives at the container store. So, I think people really need to be aware of how they can participate in this dialogue and not come from a very big way where they're, you know, starting an NGO or something like that, but they can just start with their own lives and, you know, reducing their impact and global footprint, ecological footprint. So, that's my parting words. Mm -hmm. Every uh, little drop in the ocean helps. Um, exactly. Rachel, what about you? Any final words, final thoughts? Yeah, um, I think that uh, if you are active online, uh, which I, I would guess everyone here is, because look, you're online right now. Um, think about opportunities to connect disparate conversations together. Mm -hmm. um, think about ways that we can um, use language. Um, we're really keyword focused over here, so think about ways that we can use language to help people find um, each other. Um, to connect and collaborate. Um, and if, if anybody has is planning any campaigns or wants to do any outreach, we're always happy to have super quick free consulting conversations um, to just run through some ideas with you. Um, sometimes it's it's useful to have a peer um, to talk to you about this stuff and we're we're happy to carve up little hunks of time to help people out with that. Um, I think there's a ton of amazing activity that's happening in marine conservation now. Um, and it's sometimes hard to see all of it and to see the big picture. Um, so uh, as you are all working on your awesome, awesome individual campaigns, um, think about ways to help people find you and find each other and stay connected um, and to stay really hopeful in this work because a lot of good stuff is happening. Um, it's a giant problem, um, but it, it feels less scary and way more doable um, when we think of ourselves as many, many pieces um, of a big network that's working in, in similar directions at least. Yeah, most definitely. Cross collaboration is uh, the key watchword here. Um, let's try and support everybody's efforts and work hard on our, all of our own projects. And Rachel, you definitely have to let me know next time there's a cookie party because I am definitely there. Uh, you you meant that we made the Papa Hanu Moku Akea, uh, I think perhaps the world's first ever MPA cookie. I am very jealous that I was not there. Um, I couldn't make it that night. I really want. Please let me know the next one. <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows that I love cookie decorations. It's all. Uh, well, and we have we have you know a stock of new to bring cookie cutters now. So oh, nice. We're ready to nerd out. All right, I'll have to invite some of my friends uh, who we have various cookie parties, and it could be cookie party for the ocean. Sounds great. What I'm talking about. All right. Well, again, I want to thank all of our uh, viewers for uh, watching our uh, first hangout here with the Online Ocean Symposium. Again, big thank you to all of our guests. Uh, where There's going to be a list of everybody who came uh, on our social media streams so that you can check out them and their projects. Uh, we welcome everybody to come back again. Anybody watching who's interested in uh, joining a hangout uh, on our website, there is a sign-up form, so please fill that out. Um, do check our social media streams for updates on any new hangouts, new, any new stories, and uh, let's all work together to try and uh, keep our ocean blue and healthy. So thank you. Uh, with that, Online Ocean Symposium signing off.